Forged through time, pressure and heat, gemstones dazzle with ancient beauty. Like classical music, they are solid, dense and timeless. Classical music has inspired countless songs, both old and new, but it has a big problem. Intimidation. Classical music seems like something you need a degree in music theory to understand and appreciate. And it has long associations with class and culture that can put some people off. But what if we look at it like any other genre of music? We listen to the tunes, and if we like them, we either work out the chords or look them up. In this video, I'll do just that and show you chord progressions derived from 15 of the most familiar classical pieces. The first chord progression in at 15, Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2 in C-sharp minor by Franz Liszt. Composed in 1847, Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2 was first published as a piano solo in 1851. Its immediate success and popularity on the concert stage led to an orchestrated version arranged in 1857 to 1860. The Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2 has been prominently used in animated cartoons and popular media, most famously in the Tom and Jerry short, The Cat Concerto, and the Bugs Bunny short, Rhapsody Rabbit. No. 14 is Cello Suite No. 1 in G Major, Prelude by Johann Sebastian Bach. Six cello suites are suites for unaccompanied cello by Johann Sebastian Bach. They are some of the most frequently performed solo compositions ever written for cello. Bach most likely composed them during the period 1717 to 1723. The prelude to suite number one is the best known movement from the entire set of suites and is regularly heard on television and in films. Unlucky for some, number 13 is Packelbell's Canon. Packelbell's Canon, also known as the Canon in D, is an accompanied canon by the German Baroque composer Johann Packelbell. Neither the date nor the circumstances of its composition are known. Suggested dates range from 1680 to 1706. Like his other works, Packelbell's Canon went out of style and remained in obscurity for centuries. From the 1970s onward, elements of the piece, especially its chord progression, were used in a variety of pop songs. It has also found increasingly common use in weddings and funeral ceremonies in the Western world. World. At number 12, it's Gymnopedi number 1 by Eric Sarti. The Gymnopédie are three piano compositions written by French composer and pianist Eric Sarti. He completed the whole set by the 2nd of April 1888. A sample of Gymnopédie No. 1 is featured in the 2001 Janet Jackson single Someone to Call My Lover. Gymnopédies have been heard in numerous movies and television shows. Examples include the documentary Man on Wire, Wes Anderson's The Royal Tenenbaums, and Woody Allen's Another Woman. At number 11 is Piano Sonata No. 14 in C-sharp minor, also known as Moonlight Sonata by Ludwig van Beethoven.
It was completed in 1801. The popular name Moonlight Sonata goes back to a critic's remark after Beethoven's death. The verbatim translation would actually be Moonshine Sonata. The piece is one of Beethoven's most popular compositions for the piano. Beethoven wrote the Moonlight Sonata in his early 30s after he had finished with some commissioned work. There is no evidence that he was commissioned to write this sonata. You might also recognise it from the Resident Evil video games. In at 10 is the Toreador song by Georges Bizet from the opera Carmen. Toreador song, also known as the Toreador March, is the popular name for the aria by Tostu from the French opera Carmen, composed in 1874. Usage and renditions of the song have appeared in various forms of media, such as when the song was performed by Samuel Ramey on Sesame Street, who rewrote the lyrics to be about the letter L. The song is also used in the 2014 video game Five Nights at Freddy's, and as such has occasionally been marketed as Freddy's theme. Formula One also uses this as the podium music. Number 9, Piano Sonata Number 2 in B flat minor by Frédéric Chopin. The Piano Sonata No. 2 in B-flat minor is a piano sonata in four movements by Polish composer Frédéric Chopin. The third movement of the Piano Sonata No. 2 is Chopin's famous Funeral March, which was composed at least two years before the remainder of the work and has remained, by itself, one of Chopin's most popular compositions. Number 8, Bagatelle No. 25 in A minor, also known as Fiorelise, by Ludwig van Beethoven. Fiora Elise is one of Ludwig van Beethoven's most popular compositions. It was not published during his lifetime, only being discovered 40 years after his death. Evidence suggests that Elise was a close friend of Beethoven and possibly an important part of his life. Number 7, Symphony No. 5 in C minor by Ludwig van Beethoven. Another banger from Beethoven, the Symphony No. 5 in C minor, Op. 67, was written between 1804 and 1808. It is one of the best known compositions in classical music and one of the most frequently played symphonies, and it is widely considered one of the cornerstones of Western music. The fifth has been adapted many times to other genres, including Electric Light Orchestra's version of Rollover Beethoven and a disco arrangement, A Fifth of Beethoven, by Walter Murphy on the soundtrack to the 1977 dance film Saturday Night Fever. Number six is another song from the opera Carmen, this time it's Habanera by Georges Bizet. Habanera is the popular name for Love is a Rebellious Bird, an aria from Georges Bizet's 1875 opera Carmen. Number 5, Waltz of the Flowers by Tchaikovsky. Waltz of the Flowers is a musical scene from Act 2 of the ballet The Nutcracker, which was written in 1892 by Tchaikovsky. Since the late 1960s, it has been danced by countless ballet companies, especially in North America. Tchaikovsky's score has become one of his most famous compositions. It has featured in countless films, TV shows and video games. Number 4, and one of my personal favourites, it's In the Hall of the Mountain King by Edvard Grieg.
In the Hall of the Mountain King is a piece of orchestral music composed by Edvard Grieg in 1875 as incidental music in Henrik Ibsen's 1867 play Pierre Gint. Its easily recognisable theme has helped it attain iconic status in popular culture, where it has been arranged by many artists. Here in the UK it's probably best known as the music to the theme park for two towns. Number three is another Greek piece, Morning Mood. As with In the Hall of the Mountain King, this piece also features in Pier Gint. Written in the key of E major, the melody uses the pentatonic scale and alternates between flute and oboe. As the Pier Gint suites take their pieces out of their original context of the play, Morning Mood is not widely known in its original setting, and images of Greek Scandinavian origins more frequently spring to the minds of listeners than those of the desert it was written to depict. You'll be familiar with this from many cartoons, TV shows and movies with images of people waking up and starting their day. At number two is Symphony Number no. 9 in D minor, the fourth movement by Ludwig van Beethoven, also known as Ode to Joy. Symphony No. 9 in D minor, Opus 125, the final complete symphony by Ludwig van Beethoven. Composed between 1822 and 1824, the symphony is regarded by many as Beethoven's greatest work and one of the supreme achievements in the history of music. One legend is that the compact disc was deliberately designed to have a 74 minute playing time so that it could accommodate Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. In 1972, the musical backing, without the words, was adopted as the anthem of Europe by the Council of Europe and subsequently by the European Communities, now the European Union, in 1985. And at number one, no finale is complete without the William Tell Overture finale by Rossini. The William Tell Overture is the overture to the opera William Tell, whose music was composed by Rossini. William Tell premiered in 1829 and was the last of Rossini's 39 operas. There has been repeated use and sometimes parody of parts of this overture in both classical music and popular media. It was the theme music for The Lone Ranger in radio, television and film, and has become widely associated with horseback riding since then. Amongst the films that feature the overture prominently is Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange, where an electronic rearrangement by Wendy Carlo it's played during a fast motion orgy scene. You've been won over by these classical gems, but how do they compare to more modern progressions? Watch the video on screen now to discover five chord progressions that have conquered the world. <laughs> 